Hey guys, what's up? It's John with Educated Arms getting to you today with your constitutional carry update. Uh, if you guys follow us on all the social medias, you guys know that we, we kind of gave you guys a quick 60 second update yesterday on where we stand with constitutional carry because there's been a lot of misinformation floating around. We want to kind of clear some of that up today uh, and dive in and take a little bit closer look at the amendments uh, that were passed yesterday by the Senate without going too far into it. So, without further ado, here we go guys. Alright guys, so we're going to take a better look at constitutional carry which started off as House Bill 1927. So if you watched our previous video, uh, you know where that bill kind of originated and where we stood up until this last week. If you haven't watched that previous video, make sure you go and check it out. But basically the, the newest update is uh, constitutional carry passed the Texas House of Representatives as House Bill 1927 and then goes over to the Senate. Uh, to pass the Senate. The Senate is where everyone kind of suspected that there would be some difficulties and that's where it did face a lot of difficulties. It finally passed the Senate yesterday and this is where all the misinformation is kind of floating around. Is there are a lot of people and entities out there that are saying, oh it's passed the Senate, it's headed to Governor Abbott's desk to get signed into law. That is not the case. So it did pass the Senate yesterday but it passed the Senate with amendments which means it now has gone back over to the House and the House will have to take a closer look at those amendments and basically, in layman's terms, they're going to have to agree to those amendments and then it can go to Governor Abbott's desk uh, to get signed into law. If the House doesn't agree with those amendments and they make any tweaks and changes, it can go back over to the Senate again uh, before it can reach Abbott's desk, presumably. And this can kind of do a tennis, tennis match kind of back and forth thing. Now, it's important to note, we've only got until May 31st to get this done. so. Yes, we have a little bit more time, but not all the time in the world. So that's that's kind of the the clearing up that I wanted to do is, yes, it did pass the Senate, but it did not pass the Senate without amendments, which, again, now we're back in the House. So I wanted to kind of touch base with you guys uh, as quickly as humanly possible to go over the different amendments that passed. And I'm going to cliff note this for you as best I can. Now, I have, have looked and read through these amendments and gone through the penal codes. And as an LTC instructor, uh, you know, I'm fairly familiar with the majority of the penal codes that surround handgun law in Texas, uh, and, and so that's kind of where we're going to dive in. So the first one that we've got here, guys, um, essentially is that they would make it a crime to carry in a vehicle uh, while committing another crime. And this is, is kind of coincides with Texas LTC law currently, uh, so essentially it, it just tacks on an additional crime. So if you're carrying a firearm, uh, in a vehicle while in commission of another crime, they're going to attack you with the firearm charge as well, and, and they're going to say that you weren't carrying that firearm legally. Uh, so it's illegal to carry a firearm while you're doing things illegal. Does that make sense? Uh, it's a little messy. Okay. The other one, and I think this is the one that may catch some flack, um, and there's actually a couple of them, but this one may catch some flack back in the house, um, is it's going to prohibit you from carrying a firearm for five years if you've been convicted in the last five years of disorderly conduct with a firearm, deadly conduct, a terroristic threat, uh, resulting in bodily, bodily injury, that kind of thing. And in Texas Penal Code, the, the disorderly conduct with a firearm has been kind of a vague, a vague one that's been in there. Um, you can get charged with the disorderly conduct for a with a firearm for a whole wide array of things. And I think this may catch some flack on the House side of it. Uh, but we'll see. They may pass it as it is. Uh, the third amendment that we've got in there is intoxication while carrying uh, a firearm. So essentially that coincides with where we currently stand on LTC, uh, current LTC law in Texas. Meaning if you are intoxicated, and it doesn't have to mean that you're over the legal limit, but if you're intoxicated, uh, you are not allowed to carry a firearm out in public uh, or pretty much anywhere. So if you're intoxicated, no going to firearm. That is going to basically kind of pass over and that will apply to constitutional carry as well. Uh, they're also looking to, in the, another amendment, amendment, the fourth one that we've got on here on my list, they're looking to enhance criminal penalties for felons in possession of a firearm. 
Uh, they're basically looking to make it a second degree felony with a five year minimum mandatory jail time. Uh, and, and then basically anyone who has a class A family violence misdemeanor conviction, they're wanting to convert that over to a felony as well. Uh, so basically they're, they're wanting to enhance the penalties for criminals or previous criminals who have convictions uh, who are caught carrying a firearm uh, illegally, essentially. Um, another one that they're looking to remove, and this is probably the one that I don't necessarily agree with on the removal side of it, and I think this will make catch some flack in the House as well, uh, is there was an amendment that was previously oppo uh, proposed, uh, which they've called the, the Stop Amendment. And essentially, in a nutshell, what this amendment did was it prohibited a law enforcement officer from coming up to you, like say that I'm walking in Walmart and I'm openly carrying a firearm, or I'm even concealed carrying a firearm and my, my handgun maybe is slightly exposed. The amendment that was proposed by Representative Terry essentially said that a police officer, a peace officer in Texas could not stop you essentially just because they saw that firearm. So essentially that, that, that just that seeing that gun alone was not a reason enough for them to stop you and, and then detain you and, and then question you. They have removed that amendment, meaning, um, you know, obviously your Fourth Amendment rights and all that, we could get into all that back and forth, but they did remove that specific amendment. I think that may catch a little bit of flack in the House as well. They also removed an amendment uh, that they kind of called the oops prov uh, provision, basically, which meant like if you were carrying a gun that you weren't supposed to, uh, carrying a gun somewhere you weren't supposed to be, it was kind of like an oops and, and you genuinely didn't know it. Uh, it they've, they were supposed to basically warn you to leave before citing you as part of that this, this other amendment. And they've removed that amendment as well, which means law enforcement can cite you uh, without having to warn you on that one. And, and again, I, I don't know how much flack that'll go and catch in the house as well. Um, the other two on this list, I, I full, fully agree with. Uh, essentially one, they're gonna create a new sign that would prohibit permitless carry in certain places in Texas. So if you have your LTC now, you've taken one of our classes, you know a 30-06 sign means you cannot carry concealed in that premises. A 30-07 sign means you cannot carry openly in that premises. If they've got both signs, that means you can't carry concealed or openly. What they're looking to do is create a third sign, because uh, we don't have enough of them. Uh, <laughs> and this would be presumably a 30.05 sign, which would prohibit constitutional carry or permitless carry in certain locations. So which would mean basically a business owner could post this sign up uh, at their location and that means that if you do not have a license, uh, a license to carry, if you're just carrying under the, the constitutional carry law, they could prohibit you from carrying in that location. And this is not a, a strange one. This is in several of the other states that have constitutional carry now. Um, have a similar similar law in the books. Uh, and then the final one uh, basically instructs the Texas Department of Public Safety, which those are the guys that oversee all the license to carry stuff now, and instructs them to create a free online firearm education program to help educate new students or, or, or new, new shooters, new firearm owners on these laws and kind of break it down. And uh, I fully agree with that. DPS absolutely um, has the capabilities of doing it. It shouldn't be super complicated. I know we're looking to create similar programs um, for individuals to dive into the laws and dive into these things a little bit more um, and assuming that constitutional carry gets passed. And so I think that that's kind of a good one. So again, guys, that's the cliff notes of all the amendments. I do not want to make this video too long, um, but you know, feel free to share this video with, with your friends, with your families. House Bill 1927, yes, it passed the House, went over to the Senate. After lots of debate yesterday, it passed the Senate, but it passed the Senate with the amendments that we just went over, and it's now going back over to the House uh, for those guys to kind of take a closer look at it and determine what are those amendments they're okay with, what they're not okay with, and, and hopefully get this thing wrapped up. Now, important thing to touch on since my last video, Governor Abbott has come out officially in support of constitutional carry these past couple weeks. and. Uh, has said essentially that he'll, he'll sign the bill. If, if these guys can get it together and they can get the bill to his desk, he will sign it, which is what I kind of said from the beginning that I felt pretty comfortable that Governor Abbott would sign that bill. So that's it, guys. That's what I've got for you today. Make sure you're following us on all the socials, Facebooks, uh, Instagram. Subscribe to us on YouTube. Uh, if you're a local customer looking for guns, ammo, etc., make sure you're following us on our Telegram feed. That's where we post everything up first. 
And as always, guys, stay safe, and we'll talk to you later. Thanks.